Good morning and welcome to our Good Friday service of reflection. Thank you for taking this time just to watch with us and reflect with us. We're going to have some traditional readings, sing some words as well, and just take time and pause on this Good Friday to reflect on that story. We're going to pray and then we're going to get into our, our service with a number of readings that have been recorded for us by members of the church. Let's pray together, shall we? Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity just to take this time out, just to pause, just to stop. Thank you for the words of the writer of the Hebrews who tells us and encourages us to consider him who endured such opposition from Superman, to turn our eyes towards you, to fix our eyes upon Jesus. And this morning, Father God, we want to do just that. We want to consider you. We want to think of you. We want to think of your son, Jesus. We want to reflect again on the story that is the Good Friday story. As we do that, as we hear these words read and as we sing words that we know perhaps fairly well, we pray that by your spirit you'd make them alive for us and draw out the truths that we need to hear. We thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. And we offer it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We could have a series, as I said, of, of recordings, of readings, and also songs that would disperse that. And these will just flow without me interrupting. Just allow us the time to pause and to reflect. At the Cross by Andy Stinson. I wait, and time ticks past. I gaze, made silent by the sight. I watch as soldiers meticulously move, executing each terrible, torturous task. I gasp, still life lingers in his fragile, broken form. I flinch, as blow by blow, nails bite deep through flesh to find wood. I stand, as he is lifted high, silhouetted, against the sky which he has made. I weep as his cry echoes deep in my hardened, calloused heart. I wail as he screams, it is complete, finished, final, said and done. I fall as the sky turns inky black and the sun and moon and stars forget to shine. I kneel as worlds collide and time ticks by. What once bound no longer seems to hold. I bow, for part of me is gone, kept forever on Calvary's painful peak. I wait at the foot of the cross to begin my journey home. Hello, today I will be reading Ashaia. 53 verse 2 to 7 He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is silent 
so he did not open his mouth. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood. Who is love will not remember, who can see? Throughout his eternal days On the mount of crucifixion Fountains open deep and wide Through the floodgates of God's mercy Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 1 to 16. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews, Look, I'm bringing him out to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, crucify, crucify. But Pilate answered, you take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jews insisted, we have a law, and according to that law, he must die because he claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? he asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered. You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free. But the Jews kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. 
anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of the Passover, preparation of the Passover week, about the sixth hour. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Hello. Uh, so I'm going to be reading today from John 19, verses 16 through to 27. Um, and it says, So he delivered them over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jerusalem between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and, uh, and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read that the inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, I, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier. Also his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see, who shall, uh, to who, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and his disciples, whom he loved, standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. I love that
with blood so divine A wondrous beauty I see For t'was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died To pardon and sanctify me John chapter 19 verses 28 to 42. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus they, and found he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And, as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was a Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. As I was reading the account from John's Gospel again, my eyes were struck by those words that came right at the end of verse 16. John says, they will look on the one they have pierced. He's quoting Zechariah the prophet, and uh, those words struck me. They will look on the one they have pierced. We're just coming towards the end of our first online Alpha course, and it's the first time we've done it online. It's been a real encouragement to do it. 
we've been able to watch the videos and get into groups and discuss. And we've had two groups, and it's been really good and really positive. One of the speakers, one of the, one, in, in one of the sessions, in one of the videos, Jackie Pullinger was, was interviewed and was quoted. And Jackie Pullinger is best known for working with the drug addicts and the prostitutes in Hong Kong's uh, kind of uh, gang culture. Um, and in one of these videos, she records this. She says that she says, you know, if you were the only one that had ever done anything wrong, Jesus Christ would still have died for you. He loves you that much. That's not probably word for word. That's not quoting word for word. But that's what she says. She says, you know, if you've been the only one that done anything wrong, he would still have died for you. He loves you that much. And as I reflect on that, and as I reflect on those words from Zachariah quoted by John, I'm struck by the truth that it was my sin that pierced Christ. It was my sin that held him there, as we often sing. I can't just look back on those Roman soldiers and blame it on them for the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross. When Zacharias says they will look on the one they have pierced, in effect he's not just talking about the Roman soldiers and the Jews that were there at the time. Actually that applies to me too. Because it was my sin, my transgression, my selfishness, my greed, pride, and all the rest of it that held him on the cross, that pierced him. There's something very profound and moving about Good Friday. And I think for many of us as Christians, it's a difficult day. We don't quite know how to respond on Good Friday. In some church traditions, they don't even perhaps do a Good Friday service. It's an uncomfortable day. It's a day which leaves us with questions. We want to kind of get to the Easter day and the celebration and the joy of the resurrection. But to take time on Good Friday to look at the one who was pierced for our transgressions, as Isaiah wrote, it's deeply uncomfortable. You know, we often want to fast forward. We often want to get to the other side of this day. If you ever have watched the film The Passion of the Christ, it's a deeply challenging film, and it's gruesome in places. And yet that's almost like a, 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 a film that's made suitable for, for the screen. The truth and the reality would have been even worse than what we see portrayed on video. The events of Good Friday were not nice, were not pleasant, were not comfortable. You now we often, as Christians, we want to sanitise our Christian faith. We want to make it palatable. We want to make it nice and clean and, and all attractive. And we want to get rid of all of the mess and the hurt, hurt and the pain and the, the anguish of, of Good Friday. And so sometimes we, we kind of fast forward and we, we don't do this day because we want to get to good, uh, Easter Sunday. But Zachariah and John say they will look on the one they have pierced. The cross isn't easy viewing. Good Friday is not a day. It doesn't allow us to make our, our faith clean and comfortable. But it doesn't do us any favours to rush beyond Good Friday to Easter Sunday too quickly. We need to recognise that it was my sin that held him there. And whilst I was not the one to pick up the hammer and to bang the nails into the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. And whilst I wasn't the one to pick up the spear and thrust it into his side, in effect, because of my sin, I am as guilty as those from the first century for the death of Christ. The anguish of the cross for Christ is also my responsibility. It's the consequences of my sin and your sin. You 
you know, as we look on the cross, as we do what the writer of John and Zachary encourage us to do, to look on the one they have pierced. It's uncomfortable. It's painful. It's gruesome. But it's also love. As we look on him, as we look on the one who's hanging on the cross, we see no hatred. We see no anger. We see love. He looked at those who were crucifying him physically on that day and he forgave them. He looked on his disciple John and his mother Mary and he, he loved them. He looked on the crowd and he, he loved them. He looks on us and he loves us. You know, the, the look of Jesus, the, that love that he had broke the toughest of men. Peter, it just took a look from the Savior, from Jesus, to break him. As we gaze on the cross, as we look on the one that we've pierced, we find love. A love that melts the hardest of hearts. And a love which invites us and draws us into a relationship with God. On this Good Friday, can I encourage you, as John does, as Zachariah does, to pause to take a time to, to look on him that we have pierced because of our sin. And as we do that, to see his look of love in his eyes for you and I. And may we respond to that love. We're going to pray and then we're going to sing a couple of songs just to allow us to respond to this Incredible gift and sacrifice that Christ made on our behalf. Let's, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much that your love for us moved you to send your son to this earth to die on that cross for us. Thank you, as Jackie says, that if we'd been the only one, you would have still have done that because you love us that much. And Father God, we can't even comprehend that. We cannot fathom that. We cannot grasp the enormity and the wonder of that statement. But it, we want to, in faith, believe it's true for us. Help us this day to acknowledge our sin, to acknowledge our transgressions, to acknowledge the stuff that we do wrong and have done wrong that again has caused you the pain of the cross. Forgive us, we pray. Thank you that when you look down from the cross, just as with those around, you look upon us with love, not with hatred, not with anger, but love. I pray that for any of us sitting, watching this this morning, that we would experience that love in our hearts by your Spirit. May we not rush from this day. As difficult and as hard as it is, may we allow this day to minister deeply to us as we pause and as we take time to look upon Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's a place where mercy reigns dies There's a place where streams of grace flow down
all the love I've ever felt comes like a flood, comes flowing down at the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in.
Reflections by Helen Steiner Rice With our eyes we see the beauty of Easter as the earth awakens once more. With our ears we hear the birds sing sweetly to tell us spring again is here. With our hands we pick the golden daffodils and fragrant hyacinths. But only with our hearts can we feel the miracle of God's love, which redeems all men. And only with our soul can we make our pilgrimage to God and inherit his Easter gift of eternal life. Thank you for watching today. Thank you for taking this time just to spend this time with us. I hope you've been encouraged. Please you can watch the video back if you want to watch it back again at some point to take this time to be to pause and to, to be encouraged. We will be joining again online in a similar way on, on Easter Sunday when we will celebrate the resurrection. And you're very welcome to join us to watch that with us. And if you'd like to join us in person for, uh, for a Zoom, or online for a coffee afterwards, that's available as well. And you can get in touch and we can give you the link for that on join us on Easter Sunday. But God bless you. Thank you for taking this opportunity to be with us today. And we ask and pray that your, God will bless you and encourage you in your faith.